Meet Corey Wise. At one time, he was one of the most infamous characters in New York. At the age of 16, accused of one of the most shocking crimes in New York history. Corey, along with four teenagers, were accused of beating, raping a jogger in Central Park in 1989. 28-year-old Trisha Mealy was left for dead in the mud, tied up. Her eye had exploded out of its socket. She lost 80% of her blood. Doctors did not expect her to live. Trisha was attacked during a night of wilding. That's a term police used to describe groups of youths running wild in the city, randomly beating people. When police discovered Trisha's body, they started rounding up teenagers. Corey and four other teenagers who were black and Latino ended up at a police station. They were interrogated for hours. All five ended up confessing to a crime they did not commit. With the city on edge and outraged by this brutal rape, all five were convicted. Corey said confessing was hell. And you were pulled into an interrogation room? Right. What was that like? Hell. Corey served 13 years in prison. When you were in there, was there part of you like, I didn't do this? Like, any anger? Put it this way, the only way that would come up I'm about to meet up with Satan's servants and they want to bring me problems. The other inmates. Right. That's when you go, why am I here? Right. Eventually, through DNA evidence, all five were cleared in 2002 after someone else's DNA matched semen found on Trisha's sock. Corey spent time at Rikers Island and at an upstate prison with Mattias Reyes. Reyes is a convicted murderer and serial rapist who confessed to raping Trisha. Not only was Corey serving time for Reyes's crime, but Reyes left Corey with a scar for life on his face in a fight over a TV channel. And he was like, uh, wow, I see you still, you still got the scar from our fight from Rikers Island, which is this. Oh, wow. Okay. And I'm looking at him, I'm like, oh, Ray, I, I ain't trying to fight with you right now, man. <laughs> so we just, he's like, wow, you, you still have to all these years holding it, holding it down. So as he's speaking to me, it's really going over my head. But he said, wow, you still here. You still maintain your innocence after all these years. Wow, wow. Corey believes that if he had not met Reyes in prison to this day, all five would never have been exonerated. Reyes was more of a best friend to you than your best friend. Right. Wow. That's a lot. A total stranger. And only, and only reason why he made, the only reason why he, he made us cool, he made us cool because I was fighting Reyes on over a television. Trisha was never able to identify her attacker, so I asked Corey, would you like to meet her? Did you ever want to meet her? Sure. Want to meet her? How do you, do you feel bad about what happened to her? I know you didn't, but what had happened to her? I feel bad what happened to her and me. The Central Park Five received a $41 million settlement from the city. I asked Corey if he now lives in a mansion. No, my match is my state of mind. I asked Corey if he still believes the city is racist and if it's made any progress at all. The police is the biggest gang members out here. But they're supposed to, you know, put order. On Ain't no damn order. Ain't no order. Corey now praises Mayor de Blasio for the historic settlement with the Central Park Five, but he believes that's why the cops turned their backs on de Blasio at an officer's funeral a little more than a year ago. De Blasio, Mayor de Blasio, excuse me, you made history. That's why they, that's why they behave in prejudice on you. What is interesting and to me very out of context, it's very easy to look back and say, wow, you know, the cops were the problem. Well, let me tell you something. The cops were the solution when Rudy Giuliani took office and they started stop and frisk and they stopped the crimes and murders went from thousands to hundreds. You know, there's no place in the world that is always safe, but I'll tell you this, you can jog through Central Park today. Did the money settlement, did the money the city paid, the millions, the taxpayers paid these guys out, did that solve it for him? Absolutely not. I asked him, do you live in a mansion? He said, my mansion is my state of mind. He's come to a point now in his life where he values family more than friends. He really has been on a, an incredible journey.